Family Theatre presents William Lundigan and Ted DeCorsia. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Meet Mr. Jones, starring Ted DeCorsia. To introduce the drama, here is your host, William Lundigan. Thank you, Tony Lafano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our story, meet Mr. Jones, starring Ted DeCorsia as Newt Rockney. <laughs> Notre Dame, the fighting Irish, immortalized on the American gridiron by a fighting Norwegian, Newt Kenneth Rockney. How many Rockney stories are there? Who knows? The Rockney football saga is planted deep in the heart of America. Twenty years have not dimmed the legend that is Rockney. And so tonight, Family Theater adds another story to this legend. Forgive us if fiction has found its way into football fact for this story of the Rock. It could have happened. He would have liked it, I think. Strangely enough, we call our story of Rockney Meet Mr. Jones. There he is. There he is. There's the rock. Hey, Rockney! Come on, boys. Get those train weary legs of yours on soil resembling a gridiron. Shake them up. Everybody off. Okay, ready up. Hi, Rock. Remember me? Uh, typewriter quarterback, I presume. Culligan. Oh, sure. Of the New York world until I predicted the Army would murder you at Evans Field in 23. <laughs> After that, I headed west to forget. <laughs> With Savoldi and Mullins out, who goes a fullback, Rock? We're starting Bucky O'Connor at full. O'Connor? He's a halfback. We're fresh out of fullbacks. You got one? What do you think of USC, Rock? Who's going to win Saturday? SC outweighs us 10 pounds to the man. And I understand their third stringers could be first string men anywhere else, ex including Notre Dame. <laughs> you make Saturday sound like a wake for the Irish. SC's great, all right. But I don't believe a word of your moaning. I'll have it your way. We're here in Tucson to practice. We've a long way to go. So if you'll excuse me. Is the press welcome this afternoon, Rock, at your practice? Unfortunately, we've got nothing to hide. We'll be suited up in an hour. See you there. Come on, you guys. Let's share the camp. We can save on our expense accounts and bet on SC. Right, so Rock, that's the first smile I've seen on your beautiful face since we left South Bend. Well, this is the first thing I found to smile about, Doc. Every paper in L.A. sent a man to Tucson to watch us practice. That's good. That's very good. What they write will have time to sink into the Trojans before we arrive in Los Angeles. And after those newspaper men see us scrimmage today, they'll be tabbing the Trojans by four touchdowns. <laughs> you scheming Norwegian. What are you cooking up now when you should be home in bed resting those legs? You sound like a broken record, Doc. I'm okay. Now let's get going. Now, wait a minute. Slow down. You promised me you'd take it easy. I never should have sanctioned your making this trip. You complain more than the patient. When the patient is a promise-breaking, conniving old... Easy, Doc. Easy. Remember your high blood pressure. I promised your wife I'd keep an eye on you. What? You keep an eye on me? <laughs> Come on, Doc. Knock it off. I've got to load some sports writers inside the Trojan horse. <laughs> Another fumble. That's the slowest and clumsiest backfield I've ever seen. This ball club couldn't score a touchdown if they were on the one-yard line all afternoon. Have a heart, boys. We're nursing the wounds of a tough schedule. Better you should let the nurses play and they don't weigh your line. Well, I've got to get back to Los Angeles. I have a little column to write. Me too. But don't worry, Rock. SC only beat Cal 74 to nothing. Howard Jones is a merciful man. See you in California, Rock. We'll get the lilies ready. Hey, the comes here. <laughs> Stop smiling, you two-faced Viking. Those men might lose their job after falling for what you pulled today. Doc, you misjudge me. I did nothing to deceive them. Nothing to deceive them? Putting your four biggest and slowest linemen in the backfield 
using your halfbacks for guards and your guards for ends? Can't hang a man for experimenting a bit. And did you uh, experiment to see if the boys looked prettier wearing someone else's number? Is that why you switched jerseys around? Fact remains, we've got the ball in Trojan territory already, Doc. And the Trojans don't know it. <laughs> now, let's get to work on my sensitive boys and see if they'll be able to push that ball over for a touchdown. Yeah. All right, come on, you mummies. The play acting's over. Switch those jerseys back and let's see you get your suits dirty. O'Connor, remember, you're a fullback now. Let's see you run like one. I'll try, Rock. Try, try nothing, just run. Let's stick those cleats in and block, all of you. Block so I can turn my back and hear them. And if they get up, block them again. Block, block, block. Ready. 93, 62, 12, height, one, two, three. No, no, O'Connor. We expected the lineman to fumble carrying the ball, not you. Let me in there. I'll show you how to hang on to that ball. Come on, Caridio, call signal. Oh, what's the matter, Rock? What's the matter? Rock, are you all right, Rock? Fumbles, right? fumbles, fumbles, fumbles. Why didn't my family migrate to a country that didn't play football? Yeah, Marchie, Tommy, Conley. Come on, some of the rest of you. Let me carry, Rock. Hurry now. Easy. Well, do you mind if I sit down? Or is the great coach creating new ways to destroy the Trojan horse? Sure, sit down, Doc. Oh, be careful of that leg. Why should I be careful if you're not? You promised me to take it easy. So you spent two days in Tucson playing every position on the team. Ah, oh, they look terrible, Doc, you know it. Those kids are stiffer than a bunch of broomsticks in a Minnesota winter. Mm-hmm. I see you've read the Los Angeles papers, too. Yeah. Well, your espionage strategy worked. Those men believed what they saw. You happy? Not very. I wasn't very smart, Doc. It boomeranged, boomeranged. I forgot that my boys could read, too. They're worried, real worried, and it's my fault. They're worried about you, Rock. They know you shouldn't have made this trip. Did you tell them that? Oh, they've got eyes. And if you don't start following my orders about that leg, you'll have more to worry than just a football game. Uh, I'm tired, Doc. Maybe I shouldn't have come west this year. Well, maybe you should try sleeping. You haven't for three nights. How can I sleep? All I see is O'Connor fumbling, fumbling, fumbling. Last night he fumbled 63 times. <laughs> oh, Rock, aren't you being hard on the boy? He's been a second-string halfback for three years now, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he's starting at fullback and against SC. The boy's human. No human could drop the ball that many times. Ah, uh, Bucky's a nice kid, and I think he could be a great fullback. He just stopped worrying about all the mistakes he thinks he's going to make. Well, you're the coach. Come on now. How about some shut-eye? I think I'll sit up for a while. Okay, I'll sit up with you. You know, it's too bad they didn't teach a course in football at medical school. How to diagnose plays and dissect quarterbacks. Then I could work out some plays for you in Latin. Oh, we'd really fool those Trojans then. Uh... Rock. Rock. Yeah, he couldn't fight it any longer. Oh, Sleeping Beauty, I'm not nearly so worried about Notre Dame reaching the Trojan goal line as I am about getting you back to South Bend. All right, boys, check with the desk clerk about your rooms. Okay. There's a meeting in suite 403 and half an hour. Gonna move on. I'll let a couple of the boys help you, Rock. I'll make a jog. Lean on you a little. Are you Irish? You're gonna get beat tomorrow. <laughs> well, do you think the Trojans planted them here, Rock? Counter psychological move, huh? Could be. <laughs> Want to you, Newt Rockney? I am, son. Want a paper? Read how we're gonna lick you tomorrow. We? Are you playing? Not this year, I'm not. But I will. And am I ever gonna run over you Irish? Hey, boy, I'll take a paper. Couldn't make any more fearsome reading than the way you're telling it. Three years, you won by one point. One measly point. How lucky can you get? You're quite a Trojan fan, aren't you, son? What's your name? My name's Mr. Jones. Howard Jones. Howard Jones? Of the Trojan Joneses? Not the same family, if that's what you mean. But I'm a Trojan, and I got the same name as the greatest coach of them all. Not just a Notre Dame coach. I guess you're not Irish, huh? We're Irish, all right. At least Jones is a lot more Irish than Rock. <laughs> uh, yeah, you've got me there, son. But me and Pop are Trojans anyway, like my name. Fine. 
Come on, Doc. We'll be late for the meeting. Here's your money, son. I want you to know all about how the Trojans are. Yeah, the paper's on me, Mr. Rockney. Well, thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you. I'm sorry I'm late, boys. We'll get through here as soon as possible so everyone can get a good night's sleep. Sit over here, Rock. <clears throat> here, let me help you, Coach. Uh, thanks, Frank. Is it bad, Rock? That's what I wanted to talk to you about, boys. The doc wants me to skip the game tomorrow. Rest. Oh, no. Skip the game? You tell him, Doc. Well, it's as simple as this, boys. I advised Rock not to make this trip, but I was overruled. Now he's had a new attack of phlebitis, and his legs are in great pain, grave danger. My prescription is peace and quiet, and I don't think the Los Angeles Coliseum exactly fits the picture I had in mind. You won't be with us, Rock? Well, that's up to you, boys. Well, don't leave us, Rock. No, no, come on, no. not stay. Boys, boys, that was all the answer I needed. Only God himself could keep me from being with you now. And I want you to know I'm as proud of you as any Notre Dame team I ever coached. I've driven you hard this season. I had to, a tough schedule. Let's finish it tomorrow, God willing, by bringing a national championship to Notre Dame. All right. All right, I've been overruled again. And you're all too big to argue with. But I want Rock to turn in now, and I think he wants you to do the same thing. And anyone with butterflies in their stomach better take a net to bed. We can't have any of those on the field tomorrow. Bucky. Yes, sir? Have a good night's sleep. I'll try, sir. Despite what I said yesterday, Bucky... Trying is all anyone can ask. A good try. Yeah. Well, good night, Rock. Good night, son. Well, you want me to put you to bed? Uh, you might hate me for this, but I need air, Doc. I think I'll walk around the block. I'll walk around the block? On that leg? After all I've done on this trip so far, one more block isn't going to hurt. <sighs> well, I hate myself for this, but I guess it isn't. Congratulations on your fight talk. Despite the fact that I've been used, that group of savage young beasts is ready to die for you. Uh, emotional pitches are dangerous, Doc. By morning, those kids will be scared to death of the Trojans again. <laughs> You're impossible. How'd you know that? How do you know there's something wrong with my leg? Because I'm a doctor. And I'm a football coach, and I know there's something wrong with my football team. Well, what's your diagnosis, coach? A fullback with the jitters and a team that needs loosening. If they start the game tomorrow like that, it'll be 14 to nothing by the time they wake up. Oh, you, you. I'll have the jitters myself if I'm with you another minute. Good night, Rock. Make it a short block. That's a promise. Good night, Doc. Hey, get your paper. 90,000 seen Notre Dame SC game tomorrow. You have paper, mister? Oh, Mr. Ockney. You've already got one. I uh, misplaced it. It's sort of late for a boy your age to be selling papers, isn't it? I'm nine. Nine? I guess that's old enough. I've got three boys myself around. And a girl. I don't like girls. They don't throw good. They make a lot of catches, huh? You play football, Howard? Yeah, with the Figueroa Park Trojans. I'm the quarterback. Quarterback, huh? Yeah, it's my ball. Oh, sure. Don't your parents worry about your being out this time of night? I've just got a dad. He works night. Oh. And you still think the Trojans are going to win tomorrow? Sure. Don't you? Well, frankly, Howard, no. I think we'll win. Why? Well, because we're going to play to win. And, well, we haven't lost yet. The Trojans score lots of touchdowns, and they aren't just lucky like you guys. Well, you have to be lucky to win, Howard, even if you're good. That's just Notre Dame. I tell you what. You've got about eight or ten papers left. I'll... Oh, no, you don't. We Joneses don't take charity. Least of all, from a Notre Dame man. Well, regardless of that, Howard, you want to grow up to be strong and healthy so you can play for Southern Cal, don't you? Yeah. You need lots of sleep for that. Shouldn't be selling papers this late at night. Well, it's just for tonight. I'm trying to get enough money to... To, to what, son? I want to see you get beat tomorrow. Is that it? Well, I have an extra ticket that nobody's going to use. Here. Gee... A ticket to the game? On the 50-yard line. Golly, that... Oh. What's wrong? It's on the Notre Dame side. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Well, if you'll come down to the dressing room before the game, Howard... I... What's wrong? Huh? Nothing. You come to the dressing room, and I'll see that you have a ticket on the Trojan side, okay? Honest? Honest. Gee, thanks. 
Do you live very far from here, Hard? No, just around the corner. Oh, come on, I'll walk you home. You... you limp. Yeah, getting old, I guess. Hurt? A little. You gotta learn to take it, don't you? If you're gonna play football. If you play anything, Howard, football, love, happiness, real estate. You have to learn to take it. Always remember the other guy is going to make some first downs, too. Play hard all the time. A touchdown in the first minute of the game counts just as much as a touchdown in the last minute. That's the way the Trojans play, too. The Trojans play a real good football. Well, here's where I live. Want to come in? Yeah, I'll come in for a minute, just to make sure you get into bed. I can get undressed in 60 minutes flat. 60 minutes? Oh, 60 that's a seconds. Long time. Oh, 60 seconds. Sure. <laughs> Including teeth? Sure. You watch. Paper says you must have won all your games on a prayer this year, Mr. Rockney. Your team couldn't have won them. We do a lot of praying in Notre Dame, Howard. I guess we do win a few of them on a prayer. Of course, blocking and tackling help, too. Well, you won't eat until you, until you try to tackle music or, or pink or... They're tough. See? I'm all through. Well, climb in, quarterback. I'll be on my way. Okay. Mr. Rockney, how do you pray? Hasn't anyone ever taught you, Howard? Well, Pop always said he would, but he's awfully busy. Well, it's very simple, son. You just talk to God. Do I have to know special words? Not always. Just talk to him with your heart, Howard. Like you meant it. Like this? That's the way, Howard. Yeah, that's fine. How can you tell? I didn't say nothing out loud. By your face, Howard. Your heart's talking for sure. Can I ask God for something? Sure you can. Why don't you start by asking him to bless your father and your mother, and then ask him for anything else you want. Dear God, bless Pop, because he works so hard, and please take care of Mom. Mr. Rockney, because he's going to give me a ticket for the game. And God, please bless the Trojans so they can lick the Irish. <laughs> Is that okay, Mr. Rockney? <laughs> sure, son. Amen. So long, Howard. I'll see you at the dressing room tomorrow. And good luck with the Trojans. Yes, sir. Good night, Mr. Rockney. Good night, Mr. Jones. How's the anchor, Frank? I'll tell you after the game, Ron. Ah, good boy. Where's O'Connor? Yeah, here, Coach. Uh, what's the matter, Bucky? I, I was just thinking. Hey, you're playing fullback today, Bucky, not quarterback. You don't think, you just run. Hope I don't mess up all the plays. Forget them. Didn't I preach all through the spring practice that every man should know every other man's job on each play? Yeah, Coach, but I didn't know I'd be playing fullback. Ten minutes to kick off, Rock. All right. Is he there, Doc? <coughs> yep, he's here. Fine. <laughs> then stop worrying, Bucky. If you don't know the plays now, you won't learn them in the next ten minutes. Yeah, I guess you're right, Coach. All right, quiet down. <laughs> Now, this is the place I generally insert a fight talk, but not today. I'm afraid I'll be wasting my breath. From the death masks on your faces, it seems as though you have more respect for Howard Jones than you have for me. At least you think he's turned out a better ball club than I have. It's not that, Coach. You know it is. I only know you've tightened up. I see it in your eyes when you talk, when you eat, when you block, think, tackle. You're paralyzed. Paralyzed by stories you've read and heard about the Trojan might. Well... As long as you're so fascinated by Southern California, I've arranged a little surprise for you. Howard Jones is going to give you a pep talk. Howard Jones? Oh, oh, you're kidding. I am not kidding. Won't you come in, Howard? Hi, Mr. Rockney. Hey, it's a kid. Gang, meet Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, meet the fighting Irish. Hello. <laughs> Pretty big, aren't they, Howard? The Trojans are bigger. <laughs> well, uh... How do you feel about the game today, Howard? Huh. That's your honest opinion? We're not worried. The Trojans got the best team in the country. Didn't you read the papers? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys can smile now. But wait till we get you on the field. You're gonna treat us rough, Mr. Jones? You bet we are. We got the best team and the best coach. Oh. Uh, I might agree about the team, but uh, are you sure about the coach, Howard? We got Howard Jones. And we got a better fullback, music. Hey, you guys don't even have a fullback. You're so right. <laughs> All right, three minutes. Come on, let's go. Okay. 
Here's the ticket I promised you, Howard. 50-yard line on the SC side. Thanks for talking to my boys. And good luck today, Mr. Jones. Same to you, Mr. Rockney. And thanks for the ticket. <laughs> okay, Iris, on your feet. Let's move. Let's go. Bucky? Yes, sir. Relax. I won't relax around the ball. I'll hang on. Forget about the ball now. You start running and say a prayer. It follows. <laughs> They're loose. If O'Connor would only... Oh, O'Connor fumbled back. Never mind, he recovered it himself. Down. You can look up now. Oh, he's nervous, Rock. He's nervous. Haven't you got anyone else? Not anyone who can run like he can. Kurt. Uh, yes, sir. Kurt, go in. Tell him to use the A34 pass play. Uh, yes, sir. Now, wait a minute. What's your assignment on that play? Uh, pull back and block their right tackle. Well, you pull back and forget the right tackle this time. Hit O'Connor. Hit O'Connor? I said O'Connor. And hit him with everything you've got. I want to see him sprawled on that field when the play's over. If he won't shake off the jitters, let's knock him out of him. Now hurry it up. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Hit O'Connor. A Kurth for laws. Kurth, did Roxon in the play? Yeah. Now, now get this. A34 pass. A34 pass. Snap on three. Let's go. Come, Come on, on, get out of here. What's that? Come on. Signals. 25, 63, 19, height. One, two, three. <laughs> Hey, I'm sorry, Bucky, but I had to do it. We, we scored a touchdown! Bucky, we scored! Well, that kick put us back on our own 20, Rock. You better get O'Connor out of there. He's in a daze. Just had the wind knocked out. He's all right. Oh, okay, okay, but you're the one who's worried about his fumbling. Hey, Rock! Rock, look! He's loose! O'Connor's loose! He's going all the way! He's going! Look at that boy run! 80 yards! <laughs> Just what he needed to be shaken out of it, that's all. <laughs> yeah, but what a shake it up. Six points and 80 yards for it. Yeah! Seven to nothing, and they're supposed to be national champs. Good game, Frank. Good game, Archie. Marty, that's good. Rock that fight talk from Howard Jones. Sure turned the trick. Where's Bucky? Here, Coach. You happy, boy? Oh, uh, yes, sir. I, I don't know when I ever felt better. You know why I left you in there, Bucky? No, sir. Because I knew I had the best fullback in America playing for me all week long. Oh, gee, thanks, Coach. Hey, where's that kid? The one that gave the fight talk. I guess he'll learn to respect the Irish from now on. Yeah, I guess he will. Hey, quiet, quiet. Here he comes. Congratulations, Mr. Rockney. Oh, thanks, Mr. Jones. You played a good game. 27 to nothing, and we lost. Howard, it doesn't matter whether you win the game or not. It's how you played. The Trojans played hard, good football. They never gave up, even when it seemed all the breaks were going our way. Next year, the breaks might be yours. If so, I hope we play as well as you did today. You mean that, Mr. Rockney? Sure do. We'll get you next year. You'll never beat us again, Mr. Rockney. We'll beat you back. That's the spirit, Howard Jones. Keep coming back in spite of defeat. Victory will be yours someday. Next year's we'll win. Well, you'll see, Rock. So long, Howard. We'll meet again. Goodbye, Mr. Rockney. Goodbye, Mr. Jones. Howard Jones was right. The Trojans did win the next year. Rockney never again beat SC. Newt Rockney had coached his last game. A burning airplane and a Kansas cornfield saw to that. But even in death, the Rock lived on. Lived on in the best home there is, the hearts of his fellow men, and in the young heart of Mr. Howard Jones. The words family prayer signifies something very definite. We think of a father, a mother, and children united in supplication at a definite time. Sometimes, though, families are scattered by necessity. Dad's on a business trip, the children away at school or college. 
Thus, in the days of Rockney, the great rock of clean American sport, there grew up a custom, the custom of a whole team praying together, usually right on the field before the kickoff. In those few moments, whatever the outcome of the game, those boys were not separated from their folks at home, but the more united to them, even over a distance of hundreds of miles. For prayer is the great communication medium, and it's a three-way party line. Circumstances, sometimes very sad ones, might prevent the gathering of all at the same hearth. But there's still one way they can be together, and that is, in the name of him who said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of them. Family prayer. For even across the span of a continent or half a world, it remains true, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Ted DeCorsia in Meet Mr. Jones. William Luntingen was your host. Others in our cast were Michael Edwards, Wally Mayer, Frank Gerstel, Jim Nusser, Bill Irwin, Cliff Clark, and Bob O'Sullivan. The script was written by Callie Curtis and Dick Stenger, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. Next week, starting one half hour earlier than our usual broadcast time, you will hear over most of these stations a full hour program marking the great American holiday, Thanksgiving Day. Appearing on this special broadcast will be Ezio Pinza, Anne Blythe, Richard Widmark, Pat O'Brien, Joe Stafford, Marina Koshetz, Rod O'Connor, and Jameson and James Alexander. This program will be presented by the Family Rosary. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week one half hour earlier for the Thanksgiving hour. Join us, won't you? Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>